I am a writer and a photographer and currently working at the Apple Store. I've been working with technology for God, 20 plus years. Um, for the first 15 years, especially out of college, I was working at the Kennedy Space Center, working for NASA. I was a technical writer. I still am in many ways right now. Uh, I was a technical writer for 15 years and I changed my career just very recently to devote my time to writing a book and promoting my photography. What are you writing a book about? Space tourism. So you, you've, you've got a vested interest in the future? Very much. Well, what do you think it has to offer? Um, I think the future is wide open. There's a lot of different opportunities. It's just a matter of finding enough open-minded people to look at and, and, and take a chance and say, this is where we're going to go next. You say there's a lot of opportunities. Is it, do you think it's going to be a great place or a scary place? Both. It's going to be both. When there, there's, there's, you have good opportunities, you have bad opportunities, and you have other opportunities. There's always something happening. Life is always going to be changing. With the power of the internet and inter intercommunication, you have people from different cultures from all over the world who are actually talking to each other for the first time ever. And now with the stuff going on with the war in Iraq, we're now actually learning more about the Arab cultures and religion and philosophy of those lands. Back in the, uh, you know, for the past 70 years, we had the Cold War going on, and so we had to learn a lot about the Russian culture and Russian history. And I hate to say it, there's a, uh, there's a, a saying that um, geography, I mean, war is an excuse for Americans to learn geography. And so war is an excuse to learn more about what's going out in Iraq and Iran and the Middle East and things like that. And there's like a big cultural struggle. I'm kind of diverging here, talking about an example of some of the opportunities that are happening right now. Um, but at the same time, we're learning more about each other. And there's some really amazing convergencies in Eastern and Western philosophies and medicine and ways of living. And soon we can get into a, into a situation where a medical doctor may recommend like uh, some type of yoga asana instead of doing medicine. So it's going to be a very interesting world in the next few years. So you're going to have good things happening and you're going to have not so good things happening with, with terrorists and, and people who have very focused points of view who don't agree with other people and there are going to be bad things happening. But you know, that's the human race. Space tourism is, like, is your field yes. of, of thought, I guess. Um, what is that going to be years down the road? Well, um, it's actually happening right now. It's happening right now. Last year, the X Prize was won. X Prize was a $10 million contest for the first uh, private space mission into outer space. Uh, it was a success. And starting in 2007, Virgin Galactic will be flying their first sets of passengers for $200,000 a pop to go up into uh, outer space for joyrides. Um, today, right now, uh, there's a company called Zero Gravity Corporation. For $3,000, you can go on parabolic airplane rides and experience zero gravity for a few seconds at a time. Um, then, of course, you can spend $20 million and fly with the Russians to go up to the International Space Station. I consider space tourism as kind of like the killer app, the excuse to go out in outer space. I mean, we've all seen like pictures of man going on the moon and uh, you know, the adventures of going on the Mars, seeing the Mars rovers doing their thing out there, which is all neat stuff, but it doesn't really touch you and me personally. It's, it's neat, it's out there, but we're looking for that human element. And of course, my ulterior motive is I want to like live out there and settle out there. And, but to get regular folks who are not technically oriented, not scientifically oriented, interested in this stuff, you have to find a hook, something fun, something exciting, something sexy. Space tourism is that. So imagine, if you will, an orbiting cruise ship around the Earth. Every 90 minutes, you get to see the sun rise and see the sun set. Imagine having a vacation up there. Honeymoons are going to be very popular. So that's a killer app. People will spend lots of money on entertainment. They do that right now on entertainment. And, uh, you know, sure, we should be spending more money on, like, you know, the pov poor people and, and, and disease and all that stuff. And we put money on that, too. But people spend a whole lot more on entertainment and living. And so space tourism is an example of an unusual type of entertainment and vacation out there. And the technology is getting better and better every year. And then it will just become a commonplace thing, like flying an airplane to, like, Miami or New York. Do you think it's going to take off really fast? It's been going for very slow for the past... 30 years, just mainly because of trying to get the bugs out, the technology, dealing with the politics, you know, safety issues and so on. But I think it's the, the start of the curve is just starting to happen. The exponential curve is just starting to happen. We just need to find that one, basically a Henry Ford of space. And uh, there are several people contending for that position right now.
Anything we haven't talked about needs to be said? Um, well, I can talk about my topic for quite a long time. Is there anything in, in, that you guys would like to know or like to ask that can help out with their, your research? I think, I think you've covered it for our purposes. Okay. All right. Great. But, yeah, thanks for stopping by. And Given us a little bit of your time. Appreciate that. I, I think this is a wonderful thing that you're doing with uh, you know, the in, in information that, with the internet growing exponentially. And in fact, I just had com a, a presentation, or, I mean, a discussion with someone just a few minutes ago, and I want to mention this real quick. Um, the true AI, artificial intelligence, that everyone's talking about, is really people. Starting off with Google and their search engines, which are basically optimized based on the feedback they get from people interacting. The true artificial intelligence, I think, is us, you and I, interacting with the internet, and we create this uber intelligence, which is consisted of people. We are the AI.